Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of That Random Podcast Show. Episode 9. Yes, we're getting close to double digits. Here, we are going to talk about 2016. I'll give you guys a minute to uh, get your heart rates back down to normal, and please put down that knife and please put down the stress medication We're going to try to keep this as light and fluffy as possible. I mean, what we can find 2016. I'm your host, Tyler Chansey, and with me is Michael (laughs) Mosley. Oh my gosh, I broke him. He... I am so sorry, folks. Uh, I'm just... I'm wasting my time here on on this nonsense. Alright, so, yeah, we have... Episode nine going on. Uh, Put the tab down, no, man. man. We're recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these people are horrible, and I'm a horrible person for laughing at it. But um, we're not gonna bring we're not gonna bring up the place where you've gotten this, man. No, no, we're trying to no. keep this we're, nice. It's it's look. It's at it's, it's it's at the bottom of the barrel. All right, my sense of humor is scraping the bottom. But yeah, this, th- 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 this is how bad this has gone, folks. 2016 has been such a terrible year. We have freaking squeaky clean Michael going to a digital hive of scum and villainy to find funny and horrible things. We right. have truly I mean, been through a grand year. Has 2016 really been that bad? I mean, it's no, it's no uh, different from 2000. Oh gee, you, t- oh gee, you tell me. We it's lost no, Prince. No- we lost Alan Rickman. We lost Gene Wilder. We lost. Harambe, I guess, if if you're into that, there was this the entire ongoing thing that's, that's going that happened with Brexit, um, the economy the economy go, going to crap, the 2016 U.S. election. That's all I'm going to say about it. We're not going to make this a political show, God forbid. But every but, year is like that. I never understood that. No, what is yeah, not? It is. Every year, f- people are like, oh, man, I can't wait for this year to end and next one to begin. It's always like 2013, people are saying it was the worst. 14 was the worst. 15 was the worst. And 16 was the worst year ever. It's like, come on. It's it's like that all the time. But Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, 2000, yeah, but 2016 gave us some pretty terrible movies. Also, some pretty good movies, too. And, well, that's actually going to be the focus of... I guess the first part of our 2016 did, retrospective, but folks. But did 2016 really give us anything good? Did it? Because, like, movie, movie um, wise, yes. Did it? Um, yes. Otherwise, okay. we wouldn't have a show. Okay. Did it give us anything non-superhero that was actually good? Uh, you should tell me, Michael. Utopia. Because that's yes, it's yes, Utopia. that's right. Yeah, just, okay, okay. I'm gonna be even more bougie about this. Did. 2016 give us anything good not from Disney and not superhero related? Kung Fu Panda 3. Okay, moving on. Go go, <laughs> go ahead and introduce our themes for tonight. But, yes, ladies and gentlemen, 2016, we are going to be chopping this up into two, into two um, uh, parts, ladies and gentlemen. Mostly because we're doing our best to kind of reformat that random podcast show to something a bit more bite-sized. Well, not necessarily bite-sized. Just something a bit more digestible for the YouTubes because, well, we have our spinoff trailer talk now. But the first part of this 2016 retrospective will be about movies. Movies that have come out this year, movie trends that have happened, movies we've seen, movies we love, movies we hated, movies we didn't see because reasons... And we're going to talk about them and kind of look back at everything that the cinema has given to us. So, you brought it up first, Michael. Let's talk about, I guess, another installment of Disney's new renaissance with Zootopia. Okay, so, yeah, Zootopia. I mean, if anybody follows my Twitter, you see me gush over Zootopia. Dude, you keep hitting me with, with Judy Hopps gifts. It's insane. Hey, hey, like he hey. always seems to have a, a gif ready with those characters. Hey, in it. don't feel special. All right, I do that for everybody. <laughs> I use this as, as often as I can. Uh, yes, all the Judy Hopps re- faces, all of the Nick Wilde faces, and of course the sloths that stole the show during that DMV comedy sequence. It's a really Nick. good sequence. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. You want you want a, a crash course in visual comedy? Look at that DMV sequence. It goes exactly as long as it needs to, and it hits and it gets the jokes just right. And that's the one thing I did like about Zootopia. Interesting world, you know, you know, typical characters, but they were fun nonetheless. Uh, Jason Bateman is great as always. You know, he's just he has that dry humor and charm going on, and the jokes have good timing. Like they don't linger too long on one joke. Some of the running jokes are good too because. You know, they come in when they need to, like the like the typical bunny repopulation joke that they always have, because, you know, well, rabbits. Well, 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 you, they're good at multiplying. <laughs> yes, I will admit, like, some of them are really great. Like, oh, uh, I love I love that movie. Like, that, that that has to be my favorite movie of the year, animated-wise, I would say. Animated. Tommy wise, Chong is the yak. Tommy Chong is the yak cracked me up at that naturalist place, like... <laughs> Seriously, the very fact this is a movie that came out by Disney and it had a naturist place. I'm like, oh my goodness. Is Disney okay? Did they, I don't know, change recently? Also, Tommy Chong is still alive and he's still doing that great zen stoner thing. <laughs> so, so much fun. But yeah, Zootopia was really, was really a good movie. Like, a lot of stuff it ha- had to say as well. Like, this is something that actually surprised me a lot about Disney recently. Their movies have been... They've been actually full of interesting messages. A lot of progressive messages recently. I mean, I don't want to bring it up, but Frozen was kind of the beginning of that whole thing. And then we have Zootopia. Whoa, whoa, and then whoa, we whoa. Ha- No. I'm pretty sure you're missing out on, like, I don't know, Brave? Brave tried... But tri- uh, this is going to be a bit unpopular. Like, Brave tried, but it kind of went back on itself a little too much. Like, it, f- it felt like the third act didn't have enough fall- as much fall-through as it could have. Frozen was like, screw it, kick down the door, here's how you do it. Oh my gosh. You see, that's weird, because story-wise and structure-wise, I thought both Frozen and Brave kind of, like, fail. It's, it's, it's weird. Uh, I, I really like Brave. Wow. But Brave. Brave didn't come out this year, man. You're breaking the yeah, theme. I don't really care. You want yeah. Reality's falling apart. Nope. Brave. No! Brave was fun, but again, it kind of messed up its own premise. And Frozen was just kind of lazy. Get out. I know we're not in the same room, but you get out of the recording booth right now. I'm gonna replace you with I don't know Flash from Zootopia. How you doing, Flash? I am doing. Great. That's really good tonight. Michael, get back in here. All right, so yeah, Zootopia. Uh, that was, that's my pick for the year. Great characters. Very colorful. Very fun. Uh, very colorful. Like, if there, if there was a criticism I would have, I guess, towards the movie, I've already completely forgotten that they even had had a pop song in it. It's like, that song is just the equivalent of white noise to me. I really like that song. Like, it was, it's one of those songs that has a good message in it. I like, I'm not a big fan of Shakira, but I'm not going to lie. When that song first came out, for the first couple of months, I listened to it pretty much nonstop. Uh, that's kind of funny, because I do like the message that Toby the Movie gave uh, gave as well, but I have a lot of dirty-minded people that just kept looking at the phrase, try everything, and just ruined it for me, because I roll with a scurvy, pervy bunch. Oh, man, you have issues. You need more friends. You need better friends. You, you need different friends. Can you stop criticizing my friends, Michael? You just said they ruined the innocent song from you. If anything, <laughs> you should probably look at that and be like, yeah, no. There's something wrong with these people. <laughs> but I like them. <laughs> and there's something wrong with you two, and you shouldn't blame them. And I have learned and I've learned to accept this about myself. Yeah, so don't blame them and saying they ruined it for you. No, you were already in there ruining it for yourself. Uh, wow, 2016, the year where Michael gets put up, gets pent up on my stuff and starts taking me down a peg. Mark it here, folks. I do that to everybody. You're all, and... you're all beneath me. <sighs> oh, yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Mm. So, actually, you uh, know, geez. we're here talking about 2016, and you don't like me talking about my past memories... I actually tried out AT&T's new uh, Direct TV Now uh, service. Okay, brief deviation, folks. 
And you mentioned oh, no, you I, saw no, I think watch something. Somewhere with your, well, I thought you were going to say something. No, I'm just no, 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 I'm just saying. I'm just saying you're derailing us this time around. Oh my gosh! Not true. It's not even 2017 yet, and we're flipping not, things. Not true. See, you said we're going to talk about things from 2016. AT&T's new service just happened this month. Thus, it still fits our theme in 2016, boy. And what did you watch on the service? I watched some Steven Universe with episodes okay. that came out this year. And, oh, yeah, I watched an awesome old show called Angry Beavers. Oh, darn it. Darn it. I was going to tell myself I wasn't going to do a, I guess, a deviation now, but now you've brought it up. Uh, I love the Angry Beavers show, ladies and gentlemen. It was it was definitely one of my favorite, like, sort of comedy series um, of the 90s. But I actually found out by, of all things, uh, when I went to a Harrisburg Comic Con and got to meet the one and only Richard Horowitz himself in real life. Really cool guy, by the way. Apparently, there was actually a kerfuffle over how that show got cancelled. It was because the show basically got cancelled and, you know, unceremoniously sort of kicked off the air because the writers pitched to uh, to Nickelodeon they wanted to do an April Fool's jo- joke episode where Norbert becomes aware that the show, that the entire show was actually a, fic- a fictitious show, and he was trying to convince Daggett that their episode, that their show was going to get cancelled and they were going to face oblivion. And it led to, like, a bunch of, like, bizarre moments where he basically says, hey, guess what? Yeah, yeah, we're actually cartoons. None of this is real. Our, car- you know, cartoon physics, there's no way in hell we could have survived all this. And then it was going to end with a big fat April Fool's were not cancelled, but Nickelodeon said no because they had a mandate where they couldn't let on that the show was show was ending or that there was continuity at all. Otherwise, apparently, kids will not know what's going on. So they so basically, the show got got destroyed. You know, basically, you know, taken off the air. But <laughs> but the voice actors recorded the episode anyway, and the audio was leaked online, and it's actually pretty funny. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that. Uh, so I've heard that recording, and I I I kind of missed it. Like, it's a great show. Yes. But, oh, um, yeah. It, it, uh, yeah, like, for me, that audio is like the unofficial final episode of The Angry Beavers. Just having them just sort of like, oh, my gosh, there is no dog. There is no dog. What's going on? We are canceled. Go in bye-bye. What? What, what? what are you talking about? We're a cartoon. Well, yeah, um, uh, AT&T's direct TV network isn't that great. Like, it's really weird. It has a good pricing. 35 bucks for 100 plus channels. It's pretty awesome. For somebody like me who doesn't watch TV, like, it, it'll be great to use it to watch, like, Steven Universe when it actually comes on. So I don't have to wait for Amazon. And when Star vs. The Force of Evil comes on, I can watch that without having to worry about Amazon. Yay. Yeah, that'd be great. If, and it's a big fat if. The uh, video on demand service wasn't garbage. Like for Nickelodeon, that Angry Beavers uh, show, you they only had season two up, and even then, it was like three or four episodes, and it's like episode nineteen and eighteen and seventeen. So like, not, n- not even an order. Wow. Not, not, well, not really. Like they have certain episodes that's actually up, and it's not, and it wasn't just Nickelodeon. Like Steven Universe for Cartoon Network only had uh, certain episodes. And really, the new ones like they don't do like they like they would on Hulu, where you get to catch up using the current season and whatnot. Even with the older shows, you could watch some of the you could watch like entire seasons worth. With this and their video on demand, you don't get to do that. Like the networks pick what you're allowed to watch, so really, it's not technically video on demand, and technically, it's still their network, and it's just like with TV. Like, you watch what they want you to watch, and that's... That sounds really restrictive and stupid. Oh, no, it's very restrictive. Like, watching watching uh, live TVs, li- watching watching live TV shows on your phone is really cool. It's really neat. But not having the ability to watch certain shows that you want to... Like, I understand if there's shows that the network doesn't have on their channel anymore. But, like, even the shows they still have on their channel, you can only watch certain episodes from certain seasons. Not even the new. Okay, one. okay, 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 Michael. I think we get you're starting to repeat yourself. Besides, remember you said we were trying to keep ourselves to a more stricter time frame. No, nope. Ser- seriously, the 
No, seriously, man, there's a robot right behind me right now, and he's branching a giant, thick, knobby club. I don't want to get hit with that, man. Oh, well, I'm fine, so it doesn't really matter what happens. He's coming for you next. He knows your IP address. He'll trace it down. That's fine. Run. He can try. Run! He can try. I have, I, I'm in a place where I have access to EMPs. He's made of wood. Everything about him is made of wood. Even the wood Chain is made of wood. Chainsaws. Hacksaws. And plus, it's cold out here. He wouldn't survive much longer. So, yeah, you were talking about your love for Kung Fu Panda, right? Like, how you were super excited by 3, and how you're somewhat excited, or your excitement got derailed because they're making 3 more of them? Well, I really don't have much else to say. Like, I like DreamWorks' stuff. Like, they can be deceptively really good at what they do and a good rival to Disney and Pixar whenever, whenever they want to be. Because on the one hand, you get stuff like Kung Fu Panda and Shrek... On the other hand, you get kind of well-meaning but kind of silly fluff like trolls. I mean, my cousin's little girl really enjoys trolls, but I didn't go see it. But yeah, I caught Kung Fu Panda 3 recently, and oh my goodness, like, I'm a sucker for martial arts, I'm a sucker for good animation and Eastern philosophy-focused stuff. Like, I watch... I, I try to see some interesting kung fu movies and never get the chance. And for a family movie about Jack Black playing a panda that learns kung fu and gets trained by Lucy Liu and uh, all these other all these other big name guys. I'm like, okay, I I'm down. And I'm actually glad I saw Kung Fu Panda 3. It was a good wrap-up, but then you told me apparently you have a bunch of sequels planned, and I'm actually not that downbeat about it. As long as it keeps the lights on, lights on at, P at DreamWorks, I'm fine with this. So, not much else to really discuss. Although, you did bring up, we did bring up sequels because... When you kind of look back at it, we had a lot of sequels and spinoffs this uh, this year. It's like we do every year. I don't know why you people are so surprised by that. Every year there's a new... Ooh, actually, I think February has a couple of sequels coming out, too. Yeah, I got, got a couple of sequels. Like We're not against sequels on principle. It's just it, it's just that you know, the sequels had to be good, you know? I mean, that kind of goes without saying. I mean, let, let, let me see for a second. I mean, we had an Independence Day sequel, of all things. We had this Independence this. Day... That's research. not a thing. Stop it. No. <laughs> That's not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about, hey, hey, we're fine with sequels. I bring up Independence Day 2, and you're like, no, no, do not want. <laughs> but yeah, we can all agree that movie was terrible. Let's not discuss it any further. Um... There was also uh, Finding Dory, a Pixar, a Pixar sequel, which means, you know, it's either going to be amazing or why did you bother seeing it? I didn't. Like, it's one of those movies where I don't understand why they made a sequel to it. Apparently, they had a story for it, which is kind of weird because it's the same thing they had with uh, Finding Nemo. So this is one of those times where I looked at Pixar. I was like, yeah, just like with Cars 2, I'm not going to see this, but... um. Apparently, people love Finding Dory. Oh, uh, fair enough. Uh, uh, Star Trek Beyond, uh, yeah, third Star Trek movie uh, came out in the new J.J. Abrams timeline world, and it's strange, because uh, I don't think either of us saw that. I didn't see it. I mean, I wanted to, but, you know, they got the guy from Fast and Furious to do the movie, so I was put off by it, but apparently he did a really good job. Yeah, that's what's strange. Like, I didn't really bother with the, the Abrams re reboot Star Trek. Like, I saw the first one, the 2009 reboot one, thought it was okay. But when Star Trek Into Darkness came out, I stayed home because the Sci-Fi Channel broadcast Star Trek II Wrath of Khan, and I never saw Wrath of Khan before. And so, and so I wound up watching Wrath of Khan, and you know what? It's actually a really good movie by itself. You really don't have to have too much of a history with classic Star Trek to really just pick up and watch it. And then what do I hear from much people? It's like, oh, how was Into Darkness? Oh, they just rehashed Wrath of Khan and kind of ruined it. And I'm like, huh, that's that's funny. Because, yeah, 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 hey, thank you, Sci-Fi Channel. I didn't think I'd be saying that for a while. And because of that, I was really worried about Star Trek Beyond, and I went to go see a different movie around the time it came out. But apparently, I heard the same thing you, you heard. That it's actually a really fun, good movie. But, yeah, like I said, a lot of sequels came out. But some of them apparently had more merit than others. Like X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah, I didn't go see that because Fox's X-Men movie, I, I stopped caring about them. After X3, they, they haven't been that great to me. I, I, yeah, X-Men 3 did kind of root, kind of, I don't know, 
crap the bed, so to speak. It was and it didn't really and it didn't bad. help that the origins that they were supposed to be trying to make pretty much died with Wolverine because that movie was a piece of crap. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. We do not talk about X Men Origins Wolverine because they did so much. You do not take Deadpool's mouth away. Sorry, moving on. But I actually liked X Men Days Future. I actually liked X Men First Class, that sort of '60s origin movie. They, uh, they did. I thought that was actually a lot of fun, and I liked the Rogue cut of Days of Future Past. Not the theatrical cut. The extended cut actually made a whole lot more sense. It was actually a pretty fun sort of riff on that story. I, you know, I'm like, this is good. This is fine. This is okay. And then I saw bits and pieces of X-Men Apocalypse, and I'm like, yeah, no. N- not going to do that. Like, there were two things I saw that made me say no to, the, no to this movie. Uh, one was the second Quicksilver sequence, and the second was a scene with uh, Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse. It's supposed to be like he, he you know, he's the ancient mutant that's been, that's been revived and apparently he has a bunch of these very vaguely defined superpowers. Like, apparent, like in the comics, he had atomic manipulation. He could manipulate atoms. And that's supposed to be, you know, you know, his big doom, you know he's a big doomsday-level villain, so of course it's going to be big, but they don't really explain that. And there's apparently a scene where he puts his hand on a television and starts, I guess, absorbing information from it. It's like, my lord, what are you doing? And he just goes, learning. I'm like, what is that? That is not acting. That is, that, that is, what is that? I, I have no idea what that Granted, is. It's because uh, Oscar had his voice changed up a little bit with uh, in post editing, so maybe that had a bit of an iffy effect on uh, how he how his acting worked out. But um, uh, but from- uh, but the second thing, but but the Quicksilver sequence really took me out of the movie because. Days of Future Past ha- introduced their version of Quicksilver to kind of compete with Age of Ultron's Quicksilver. And what does everybody remember from Days of Future Past is the scene where Quicksilver does this really big, elaborate, slow-mo, you know, s- slow-down action scene where he, like, rescues Magneto and Charles Xavier and redirects bullets with his fingers and it has time in a bottle playing and everybody's like, this is cute, this is fun, this is silly. They decide to do that again in, D- in Apocalypse and they crank it up to a 15 to the point where I'm just like, Okay, there was absolutely no way in hell I should even care about anybody in this movie if he has bullcrap speed that that fast. Apparently, the X Mansion blows up in the movie, and apparently Quicksilver was capable of reacting to an explosion about to happen in I don't know the tenth of a second for the reaction to occur. Ran into the X Mansion, saved everybody inside the mansion while also throwing up pillows and stuff to make sure everybody gets, gets their falls cushioned. And he's running up the stairs as they're blowing up and takes care of everybody, all while Sweet Dreams Are Made of These is playing. And I'm like, yeah, no, there is super fast, and then and then there is that, like the Flash. Maybe you could pull that off. Quicksilver, absolutely not. It was just they went too far with the scene, and I'm like, okay, and they didn't, and they didn't put him on a plane like the other days of Future Past, they said, okay, you're here, you can go away now, no, he stuck around, I'm like, okay, why is there, like, why is there still conflict in this movie now? Because there shouldn't be. Right, well, okay, granted, their Quicksilver was done before Marvel's Quicksilver, like, they had him pretty much at the same time. It, 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 it was it was basically Fox, you know, being into the punch yeah, first. Yeah, Fox got him to the punch first, and from what I understand, because again, I don't watch the X-Men movie after... <clears throat> Sorry, after uh, Wolverine, because oh man, after that I lost all faith in Fox and their productions. But um, I need to stab Jean Grey and end this. How do you mess up the Phoenix Saga that badly? Sorry, by not setting it up properly. That's how by just throwing, like oh yeah, you guys remember Jean Teleke- te- te- telekinetic energy, split personality. Also, there's a mutant cure. What? Yeah, like not Sorry. even setting it up right. That's how you mess it up. But um, from what I understand. Fox's Quicksilver was way cooler than Marvel's Quicksilver. And that's that's saying something because Marvel's Quicksilver wasn't that cool, to be honest. It, I, I, I think it's more, more of a problem with Alan, of Aaron Taylor Johnson. I mean, he was good in Kick-Ass, but other than that, I really don't think I remember him from any other movie he's been in. Like, I, th- I actually just forgot, I just, just reminded myself, he was supposed to be the lead army guy in that in that American Godzilla movie that came out re- came out recently. I actually forgot he was even in that movie. Oh yeah, that's right. I hated that guy, well, his character, because that character sucked. So, yeah, they, all right, so that probably explains it all. Don't let that guy be your superhero. <laughs> I, have a li- I do not have big picture. I have a little picture. Nobody cares! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, let's, see, let's see, what other movie have we seen this year? 
Like, well, there were well, there were a few remakes. I know, I know they kind of came out remake sequels. I guess, I guess you could okay, say well, that I did, did kind of pop up. Did you see the Ghostbusters movie this year? Yeah, we we talked about it on and off several times, man. Where have you been? Have we talked about it? Like, have you really talked about it? On and off here and there, good, but we, and good, really that just means we don't have to talk about it now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we kind of already mentioned it, mentioned it passing. I thought it was a perfectly serviceable. I, I thought it was actually a, a serviceable movie. Not amazing, not terrible, just okay. Like, had some merit, had some problems. And if they do a sequel, I'd be okay with that. Just get a different screenwriter, please. Oh, you know, um, I just remembered. Suicide Squad, uh, the extended cut, is coming out. By, yeah, by the time this podcast goes out, it'll already be out. But as a time... Officially on Blu-ray and DVD. Yeah, but as of this recording, it's only on... Uh, the digital storefronts digital, right now. Yeah. So you said that you were interested in seeing the thin cut, right? Or you wanted to see it out of curiosity? Uh, actually, um, this is something I do do bring up, Michael, because we've mentioned it in passing so many times uh, throughout this show. Check them out, folks. Plug, plug. That I I didn't just think Batman v Superman was a, was a bad movie. I, th- I found it to be legitimately insulting on multiple levels because of how the filmmakers treated the property and treated their even their own adaptation. I didn't like how they handled Superman, didn't like how they handled the DC Universe uh, world building, and what little I saw of the extended cut of Batman v Superman barely justified even my attention. Like, okay, what, what, what do they add to it? Oh, the animal footage where they try to clean up their own plot holes. At, oh, and they introduce an entire subplot where Lex Luthor's plan that made absolutely no sense was because he was being controlled by Steppenwolf, the, for, the new god of Apocalypse, the hunter. And I'm like, that is dumb! That is completely dumb! Steppenwolf is not a manipulator, he's a hunter. He wouldn't do things through Lex Luthor, he would, he would show up to Earth himself and do a most dangerous game sort of thing. Actually, that would have been a much better premise than what they were going wait, wait, with. Wait, wait, wait. Batman- that, that was the excuse for why Lex Luthor hated Superman? Or, like, or, or yeah, wanted th- to pit Superman and Batman together? Yeah, 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 apparently that was the big reveal in the extended cut. Steppenwolf was mentally manipulating Lex Luthor because he was interacting with him and basically saying, oh, by the way, if you don't do something to stop these threats, my master will show up because step because he's supposed to be hinting at Darkseid. And, yeah, Lex Luthor is the stooge to the foaming-at-the-mouth muscle of Darkseid's people. That, that doesn't is make, the, That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I know. I mean, Really, like you could you could find any random smuck, and somehow the always the, the the always on top of everything, always one step ahead of everybody. Lex Luthor, seriously, come on. Lex Lu- Lex Luthor is oh, no, one no, of the I'm very so- few people. I'm sorry, Lex Luthor Jr. It's not Lex Luthor Jr. His the original Lex Luthor's actual name of the comics is Alexander Luthor Jr. That's his full name. He just he just calls himself Lex Luthor. He is not Junior. Stop telling yourselves that, no, fanboys. It's that is not the real Lex Luthor. That is just the offspring that nobody wanted. You see what I'm talking about? We try not to talk about BVS. We want to talk about BVS anyway. But yes, yes, Steppenwolf was was in the extended cut. And frankly, there was a much simpler reason for Batman and Superman to fight then. Steppenwolf does some crazy world-bending stuff and warps Batman and Superman into a most dangerous game style place and says, okay, now kill each other, I'm going to blow up Earth. Bam! There! You, got yourself, you, you, you want an excuse, excuse to have the world's mightiest heroes fight each other? Fine! Do that! But apparently, no, we gotta have a bunch of other nonsense. But, you see, yeah, I saw a bit of the extended cut of Batman v Superman, and because I was so reprehensibly offended on every sensory level of this move of that movie I didn't bother seeing suicide squad I said no I've been burned with a red hot poker that could cut through <laughs> osmium and I thought no not doing it again not putting up with this even though I did like that they decided to go ahead and actually try to do the super villains get forced to do black ops stuff I mean, they actually beat Marvel to, to the punch of that. I mean, they did. They got Suicide Squad screens before Marvel got a chance to do their version of the Thunderbolts. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I mean, we're getting the Inhumans soon, so yeah, that's, that's oh, kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, we're getting the Inhumans. I'm fine with and that. The Defenders. But, but um, 
Okay, well... I, but, I, but, 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 but here's the thing, though. I, I also have a bits and pieces of Suicide Squad, and I didn't like how they were marketing it. Like, they use way too many pop songs. Like, okay, okay. Like, now, it, I'm with something right there. I'm glad they did that, because it showed that the movie could have been fun. After what happened with Batman v Superman, <laughs> everybody needed something fun from DC. Like, even, even if it was just one movie. Suicide Squad is the movie that you needed to be fun. All right? It could be dark, but it could also be fun. And Michael, the marketing... Michael. No, 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 no. The marketing worked for that, it's just too bad they said a damn movie didn't. Michael, that's the great irony, though. I hated Batman v Superman because it was a dark, plotting, needlessly convoluted insult that completely destroyed the foundation of two of the biggest characters in the entire DC universe. Suicide Squad, by its very nature, is supposed to be a dark and nasty story about a bunch of C and D list guys trying to find some level of redemption while dealing with insane crazy odds where they're most likely going to die in order to get shortened prison sentences. I wanted Suicide Squad to be dark and disturbing and actually and, and kind of fun in a dark, callous way, but instead they ran the entire movie through Hot Topic and you know, put a bunch of pop songs, a bunch of fun stuff and saying, Hey no, wait, wait, no. It's like they reacted way too hard to Batman V Sermon being criticized as being too dark, and then took the movie that should have been a dark but kind of you know sickly hilarious movie and Filled it full of filled it full of pop songs and did a bunch of silly stuff for it. They went through seven hundred cuts of this movie and took the scissors to it, trying to say, "No, look, we could be fun too." See, you ruined it. You yeah. ruined. You and see, wasn't it script <laughs> written like six weeks or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, apparently, they basically rushed that movie out because they were because they cause this is back back when Warner Brothers was trying to, I guess, speed speed through all the foundation stuff that Marvel was doing in their movies. But you see, that's what I'm getting at. And everything I heard about the movie just made me say, no, I don't want to bother with it. Like, Jared Leto's underwhelming Joker, Margot Robbie and Will Smith actually being the only good things in that movie. I'm like, okay, fine. And they say, hey, wait, there's an extended cut, like the ultimate edition of Batman v Superman. Do you want to see that? No. No, I do not. <laughs> I have no intention of <laughs> to seeing it. To be honest, it. even though I've seen Suicide Squad and it was an okay movie, it was just okay. Um, I want to see this extended because it's supposed to have more of Jared Leto's Joker in it. And no, it doesn't. I'm pretty sure it does. It has, it has no. an extended story with him. No, it doesn't. Yeah, his torture scenes extended. And wasn't there a little more with uh, Harley Quinn in it? A couple extra seconds does not account does not account no. for a whole. Yeah, see, I'm still gonna watch it because I want to remind myself if I like that movie or not. <laughs> I just remember it being okay. I remember me walking out, not being mad about it. Probably because I went to a free showing. I, I, ah. I went, yeah, I went to an event screening for it. I was going to do a review for it, but it never happened. Um, and this, and this right here is why I am. This right here is why I'm actually hoping our cha this channel gets better and we can actually do more official proper reviews here because I will whip you into shape, boy. Oh God, that was yeah, terrible. I'm sorry. You racist pig. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my gosh, you're black? Probably. I mean, we don't, most likely. We, 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 we never met in person. Oh my word. <laughs> Unintentional but, um, racism is still racism. I'm sorry. But yeah, I, I want to see the extended edition because Jared Leto's Joker was okay. He wasn't in it enough to actually like leave an impression. So it was just whatever. It was a guy cosplaying as Joker, I guess. Um, Harley Quinn? I mean, I mean, it's not killing me. It's just hurting me really, really badly. Huh? Huh? Oh, I'm not even gonna laugh at that. <laughs> um, uh, Harley Quinn. I'm sorry, people. I didn't like her. All right, this Harley Quinn was stupid. Every time we see a new Harley Quinn, she's wearing less and less and looking trashier and trashier. And I can't take it anymore. Harley Quinn is supposed to be like, like mentally disturbed, innocent, cute. Now all we get, but, all, but, now, but, but no, also, no, but, no. but also has several doctorates. Yeah, yeah, and she's she's technically a, a psychological genius. But now, the more and more we see her, the more and more like bimbo as she gets, and I don't understand why. Like, if you want a good Harley Quinn, you might as well watch the animated series and read and and read the comic books. I have a great reason for you because you like doing this to me a whole lot. It's because attracting the male gaze gets more butts and seats, which but means you more money. You don't need that with Harley Quinn. You don't need to. Yes, you no. do. Yes, you, want, you do. You, no, if you if you want to do that, yes, get somebody, yes, no, yes, you no, do. No, yes, you if do. you want that, get 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 Catwoman or Poison Ivy. You don't need that with Harley. All 
All right, Harley is already a badass character on her own merits. But 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 slutty skimpy outfits are better to sell at Hot Topic than cat suits. Uh, it's all about the money, Michael. See, I mean, I, it's all I about know, the money. But... How does it how does it feel, man? How does it feel? You like doing that to me? All the shows? <laughs> I don't ever remember doing that to you, like, ever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, this Harley Quinn... And I'm not saying this Harley Quinn was bad because of what she was wearing. It's because of the way she was portrayed. It was just so stupid. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see crazy genius that knew how to handle herself. I saw teeny bopper with a baseball bat. I didn't see Harley Quinn. Like, Har- she, Harley wasn't really cracking any jokes that was, like, Harley-esque. It just seemed like... I don't, I don't know. I can't. Hi, I, hi I'm here. I, I dyed my pigtails. Give yeah, me money. You could, you could, you could have picked any random woman off the street, like throwing some makeup and some lipstick and dyed it to her hair and throw her, and throw her in some hot pants and a shirt. And you pretty much have Harley Quinn, but you, what you don't have, which is weird because the actress, oh wait, what was her name? Margot, Margot Robbie. Oh, darn it. You beat me to it. Yeah. When, when Margot is playing Dr. Quinn, when was she playing Doctor Holloquin? That's fine. She was fine. She she she's also a good actor. Like I liked her in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, like like she was she was good at that. That was pretty cool. I like that. But as soon as she became Harley Quinn, ah uh, no. Oh my oh my god oh my god, Mister J, where did my personality she, she go? We left it on the cutting room she floor. She didn't have that annoyingly cutish high pitched squeal that you got from the original Harley Quinn. And the new Harley Quinn, played by uh, Tara Strong, you don't get that. Instead, you get—I think she was trying to do a accent. I'm not sure. It was on and off, like one minute. Yeah, one minute she had the squeaky Mr. J thing going on, and then she had Margot Robbie going on, and it kind of like went back and forth through that, and it was kind of weird. And yeah, and, and the way she kept saying "Putin," I was like, "Yo, this doesn't work." Like. There, there, there's there, there's pudding and then there's pudding yeah like i don't know something about this harley quinn did not click with me it was more than what she was wearing it was her portrayal it was her personality Th- then again then again i've got that's kind of how everybody in suicide squad fell f- felt like you know it's the problem when you have a screenplay that was cranked out in six weeks you know a lot of stuff kind of gets lost or gets glossed over but there was something else as well that came out that apparently i have no excuse to not see anymore which was the live action remake of the jungle book it's, it's available now on netflix and you said go, you saw go that. watch it oh man go and watch it are you sure because yes. i i remember seeing the the animated jungle book and i remember remember being kind of like ah, oh, eh, this was okay like even as a kid i'm like this is okay yeah well in, in, in this jungle book uh if you like film, the technical aspect of this of the of this movie is phenomenal. Like that, that I, is, I heard I heard good things. I heard they had a really good kid actor. Oh, oh here. Yeah, yeah, like the kid stumbled at times, but you know, kid actors. But yeah, he's definitely one of the more less annoying kid actors you you've seen in movies recently. Yeah, yeah. Like he still has he still he's still learning. You can tell like, there's still some rough edges, but you know, I can't act, so he 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 definitely does a better job than me. <laughs> All right, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, but but the but, technical aspect is great. The animals, why they do look pretty CGI ish, they look real enough to where you know it, it, where you see how far CG has come. And I've new, seen the trailers; they, they did look very impressive. Oh yeah, and the new techniques that they have, the way they have them moving, is really awesome, and I really like it. Uh, they, it has a bit of a plot going on, unlike the original movie where they just went from one set piece to another set piece. This one. You know, it, there, 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 yeah, yeah. There was there was a bit with, with the orangutan. There was a bit with the snake. There was a bit with the tiger. And then it was over. Yeah, like that one had like this one uses the original as kind of like a board or like a storyboard. Like, okay, these are the places we want. Let's do a little story around it. Okay, okay, that actually sounds pretty good. But there is one last thing that did kind of happen in 2016, which was yet another year of adaptations and. I would say movies where they try to make sequels or spinoffs and don't know when to leave well enough alone. Like we, like, like we got Tim Burton trying to do an adaptation of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which I swear to God, the only reason I even remember that movie was because Ava Green is in it, and I'm a big fan of Penny Dreadful, and I love 
just about anything Ava Green is in, really. But even I didn't go see this movie, so frankly, I'm surprised I brought it up. And there was also that Potter spinoff, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Did you bother with that one at all, Michael? No, I just read the uh, book Cursed Child. I didn't bother with the movie at all. Uh, oh, okay, okay, that was your, I guess, prerequisite Potter stuff uh, for, for 2016, yeah, reading The Cursed Child. Yeah, I just, I, I just read the, uh, the play, which is pretty good. And, you know, yeah, I've heard good things. Yeah, they had Eddie Redman in the movie, and, you know, he just seemed lost in that movie. And I heard he was okay. Well, I'd say that's a bit better than the role he played in Jupiter Ascending. Oh, dear me. Moving I'm on. Sure that's not hard to outdo. I could have had life! And I destroy it. Who gave him that direction? I'm uh, sorry. The Wachowskis? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, all I heard about Fantastic Beasts Where to Find Him is they're basically doing a spinoff out of a guy that wrote one of the textbooks for Hogwarts. I'm like, what's the plot? Oh, it's 1920s, he goes to America, and apparently he has a bunch of monsters or whatever in a suitcase with TARDIS tech in it, apparently, and then they all escape and he goes after him, and then stuff happens. I'm like, okay, we're gonna make five movies out of this. No. Gone. Done. Not coming back. No. Like, I love Harry Potter, I love the books, I love the movies, and I actually just got sorted to Pot and Pottermore recently, and actually enjoyed the, all the additional texts and world building that J.K. Rowling has brought to that world. I do enjoy Potter, but Fantastic Beasts? No, I'm sorry, no. I just it, really it, want them it, to it, do it, a it's, movie. It's I just really want them to do a movie on Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I want that one, because apparently the play is really good, I want to see it, but of course I have to go to the UK for that. But I just wanted to make a movie based on that play. Uh, don't worry about it, folks. We're actually we're going to be coming around to positivity because I'd say that's kind of a good way to kind of go about this. Get get a bad taste of the negative and the meh into your mouth, and then we wash it out with the good stuff, the delicious stuff. Because we did get some fun stuff as well. Like, apparently Seth Rogen and his people decided to kind of... Take the cr- t- take the piss out of the Pixar animated film formula with the raunchy comedy Sausage Party, which <laughs> is apparently one of the better movies that came out this year, of all things. I'm surprised as much as you are. See, I keep telling myself I'm going to see this movie, but at the same time, I have not gone through the trouble of going to Redbox and actually picking this thing up because it's cold here now. It's, 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 falling, <laughs> it's falling below 20 degrees. Today it was 12 degrees. And oh yeah, it's getting pretty bad over here too. Yeah, and I was not gonna walk out in the snow and the freezing cold to go to Redbox to pick up this movie and then, and then come back. Yeah, I could rent it online, but it's like three bucks online. So I was like, yeah, no, I, I really don't care that much. So I have, th- th- I th- have three three bu- three bucks to watch Seth Rogen and Kristen Wiig try to, I guess, hot dog and hot dog bun metaphor for <laughs> no. Not gonna do that. I, I, no, I'm, I'm. I. I don't know. I keep telling myself I'm gonna watch it. Never do. I get myself caught up in watching like Road Rovers and Angry Beavers. <laughs> well, there's something wrong with that. But yeah, there's also a bunch of other movies I know that also came out that are actually really good. Like the Coen Brothers is Hail Caesar. I like the Coen Brothers' work. I actually really did enjoy their remake of True Grit with Jeff Bridges as Rooster Cogburn. But for some reason. Uh, Hail Caesar kind of slipped through the slipped through the uh, uh, the net for me. Um, apparently, there was that really aggressively nasty indie movie called Green Room, where Patrick Stewart his pl- plays the head of like this group of toughs that like terrorize these guys. Apparently, it's supposed to be really nasty, but whatever. Mel Gibson made 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 a, made a world made a war movie with Andrew Garfield, Hacksaw Ridge. I've heard it's pretty intense in terms of in terms of in terms of what it shows on screen, but it's actually a really good. Uh, Apparently, it's a lot of fun. I mean, that's kind of weird I say that. It's gory and terrible, but it's a lot of fun. What is wrong with me? But apparently, that's really good. But, yeah, it seems that once again this year, nerds that we are, we ha- we didn't t- take a lot of enjoyment and personal satisfaction out of the stuff that came out of, let's call it what it is, the many, 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 many studios under the Walt Disney Corporation. I mean, you said to yourself at the very beginning, name a couple of movies I've seen this year that wasn't released by Disney. And, well, thankfully I found a couple. But, yes, we are talking, of course, about the big ones. Um, 
there was Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange, uh, Moana, and uh, and I guess technically Marvel has some tangential connect connection to it, but yeah, there was also Deadpool. Yeah. We haven't really discussed it. We, no, we didn't really talk about Deadpool because neither of us... Well, I mean, I really don't remember it. I mean, I remember it being an okay movie. It wasn't like darn near a billion dollars worth good, but you know, it was it was okay. I am just glad it got made. I'm glad it got made. I'm glad Ryan Reynolds put all that time into it because <laughs> you try looking at Ryan Reynolds now, the dude is off his nut now. Like, if you follow him on Twitter or follow his social media, it's like he got a little too into the character and he's kind of a little <laughs> right now. I mean, come on, uh, let's those... face it. Like, theatrical wise, big movie wise, this is all he has. This is his biggest thing. All his other movies are pretty much been flops. And. Really? We do not talk. We do not talk about rest in peace department or Green Lantern. They well, they do not too exist. Too late because Deadpool talked about Green Lantern already. And you know I've seen that he does interesting things that go either straight to DVD or streaming services. I, I heard good things about Buried, but I never saw it. See, as I'm talking about, Ryan Reynolds isn't one of those actors that you expect to see in big time movies. Deadpool. He's a good actor. It's just, I mean, he's, he's, it's he's just an he, okay, funny actor. You know, after what, what, what was he in? Like uh, Van Wilder, something like that. Yep, yep. He was in a lot of Van Wilder. Yeah, like that's him. That that's his thing. That's like hoping Seth Green are probably doing a Academy Award movie or something. Like it's not going to happen. They, they they fit certain things. Watch it. Watch it happen. Watch it happen. Watch it happen. Somehow, Robot Chicken the movie gets made and it gets nominated and wins an Oscar. Make it happen, Seth Green, Matt Senreich. Listen, I would watch it. You would watch it because I am garbage. But yeah, Deadpool came out, and once again, I'm glad it was successful. I'm glad it did so well. But I'm not going to lie. You have to be mentally like 15 to really dig the movie as much, and if you've seen more movies than a couple R-rated ones that you're not allowed to see, it wouldn't really impress, but it's exa- it was exactly the right itch that needed to be scratched at the time, but there were a couple of the big movies that did come out from, uh, from Disney and Marvel, so you know what, let's take the reins off. Michael, feel free to gush. What did you think was the better movie that came out under the the Marvel brand. I'm well, well, under the Marvel brand. I mean, I see that's unfair because really it's just Civil War. Like, is is there really any other movie you want to talk? Well, Doctor Strange, I guess. Doctor Strange was really yeah. Good. Yeah, for me, it's a kind of a neck and neck race with Civil War and Doctor Strange. You know what? I'm gonna go with Civil War because. It gave me a th- it gave me the thing I wanted. It it, it gave me the uh, Tony Stark versus Iron Man. That's been Tony Stark versus Gosh, Iron Man. It. It g- I'm thinking Iron Man three where Tony like goes against himself. No no no. It has anxiety. Yeah. It, it it finally gave me the Captain America against Iron Man that I've wanted pretty much since the first and, Avengers. And and they made and they made that entire conflict sizzle. Like this is something, this is something that's really weird. Like. Batman v Superman came out and it was trying to be an adaptation of the death of Superman and the Dark Knight Returns and tried so desperately to mishmash their story together to match the material because the material is apparently sacrosanct and must not be touched and is the coolest thing ever and it was just this terribly dated, horrible thing. Civil War, meanwhile, was an adaptation of the comic event Civil War and I'm letting you know right now, Michael, the Civil War event was pretty terrible. Like, a lot of it made no sense. It was all over the place characters remain, remain didn't, didn't remain consistent and what did what did the russo brothers do with this movie adaptation they made it work with the sokovia well, Accords okay. and a lot of yeah, yeah. And, a, and, and a lot of big, big ideas and mentalities you know do, do you go for government oversight do you go for not and it came down to blows of of conflicting philosophy it's not good versus evil it was surprisingly nuanced yeah and granted for them they didn't have to work with the whole marvel universe they, they they kept it oh, within yeah. reason of like what Marvel already had. Plus they, they got a chance to introduce Spider Man and Black Panther. So that was really cool. So like, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for the Black Panther movie. Chabak uh, Bossman was really fun. Man, I can't believe we gotta, can gotta wait two more years for that one. But, you know, hey, take your time with it. I'm s i am I'm still waiting for Captain Marvel to happen. Cannot wait for that to uh, happen, by Isn't the way. that twenty twenty? 
Isn't that like after? Isn't that like a year after uh, the Black Panther movie? Oh dear me! <laughs> but yes, yeah, Civil War. I will say, in terms of big events that had happened, Civil War was definitely the more interesting movie out of the Marvel universe. But in terms of, I guess, character arc, and in terms of well-meaning stuff, I did enjoy Doctor Strange's personal journey a lot more, personally. Um, so, a- anything else you, you may have seen that's even remotely close to um, not Marvel since you put me on the spot, Michael? I know you say you haven't seen a whole lot of movies, but what have you seen? I mean, other than, the, like, mostly just the stuff we talked about. A lot. I've skipped out on cinema this year because, honestly, there wasn't a whole lot that caught my eye. And well, of course the winners down here is pretty. I'm I'm not leaving my house. I'm not leaving my room. Oh, that's understandable. I mean, I do want to go on and see La La Land eventually. I'm I'm a bit of, I'm a bit of a fan of. It's been a while since I've seen a good musical, and I've heard good things about La La Land. But probably the big, probably the the best movie I've seen this year that hit me in a very emotional place that I needed at the time was, I mentioned it in passing before, but it was Laika Animation's Kubo and the Two Strings. Like, in terms of, I guess, movie of the year, I guess, or if I were to give out, I guess, a That Random Podcast show, The Feels Award, I would most likely give it to Kubo. I mean, it's really annoying. Laika Animation does these really great movies, but hardly anybody goes to see them. They don't never write their budget back. That's because people aren't and, really into uh, stop motions. Like it doesn't. Some uh, stop motion just turns people off. And yet, Laika is blisteringly w- good at it. And I'll say again, the plot of Kubo, it, it got me, and it, it got me in a particular place. What's go- what was going on? It, like, I really don't know how else to say it. Like, it's really difficult to really talk about it without kind of giving it away. It was. It was it, it was basically a sort of Eastern f- fantasy flavor flavor world about a kid missing an eye that can bring paper to life and command it with his guitar, and he goes on this adventure, and it's surprisingly heartbreaking but also very passionate uh, of what happens. It's, it's a very character focused piece, and he had some good actors in it, like a lot of Japanese and other and a lot of Japanese uh, named characters do pop in. Like uh, Kiri Hiroyuki Tagawa, George Takei, yeah, they, they all have some parts in it. Uh, uh, Charlize Theron and Matthew McConaughey actually do have ma- major roles, and they're actually really good in it. Like, uh, it's it, it's one of those things where I I would feel more comfortable writing about it than I am speaking about it, Michael. But yeah, I would definitely have to say once again for everything like at least the second time, I do have to go say please go on and see Kubo and the Two Strings. I don't care how you see it. As long as you pay for it, these guys deserve it. Well, maybe they make Coraline too. I'm sure that... It... You see, you're the problem, no, man. No, 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 no. What I'm, saying... <laughs> what I'm saying is, a lot of people like Coraline. I'm pretty sure if they did a Coraline too, it could remind people that they're really good at what they do. It's like, oh, yeah, that's why I like this in the first place. It's actually interesting. But that's, why I... but that's why I like Laika. They don't... They don't franchise their stuff. I mean, the only thing close to a franchise is their unique look and style and their narrative well, we focus. Did Pixar, but look where we are now. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, but Pixar is part of Walt Disney and whatever prints money for Disney is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, come on. You, you really can't spin that. I mean, I like what Disney and Pixar does, but let's face it. They do want to make good stuff that resonates with people because that's where a lot of the big money comes from. But at the same time, this will make money. But I is mean, that, is that that's really not a, a big thing? revelation. Like, it's not a it's it, it's it's not a downside thing. It, it, the thing about those is that there's making money smart and there's making money in a cynical, manipulative way in a very obviously pandering way. And I think, and I think that's why whenever people whenever people this happens to me a lot. People keep saying, "Oh my gosh, why are you criticizing this corporation? They're just sent to make money uh, because because they're terrible at it, because this is a bad idea, because it's like people are people. People are not sheep with wallets." And I hate when I hate when some companies <laughs> think, think that you the obviously ladder. don't know business. Everybody's a sheep, all right. You you learn what the sheep wants and you herd them all in. That's all, Michael. That's all Michael. Business. Michael, I'm trying to say hide that more. 
<laughs> I know that's obvious. I know that's obvious business one on one stuff. But if you can convince me that I'm a special little snowflake that you're personally catering to, I will give you money. And that's how you so get more money out of me. And if you do that to more people, so, so we, and at the same time, you do that. So, we, so what you're saying is, I should aim towards the Tumblr crowd. I am not on Tumblr. Okay, damn it, I am on <laughs> yeah. Tumblr. Damn it. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, like, for the past five, six episodes, you've been giving out your Tumblr, hoping that people would see you, like, goofy and Tumblr nope, fan and nobody, And nobody does a damn thing with it. I'm so alone. I mean, it, it's, it's <laughs> no. Tumblr. Isn't everybody alone on Tumblr? Every, everybody's alone on Tumblr, but everybody's special. Everybody has like fifty-two different genders. <laughs> Yikes! Well, on I am on that note. I am not joking. It, it is very extensive, and it hurts my head. <laughs> oh no! I, I I've seen it. I've known I know people who are uh, who are part of those groups. Different. Hmm? Who are different? No, I mean like they're cool people. Like I have no issue with it. Like no, 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 no! I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not being, I'm not being. No, no, no! I know, I know. I, I'm not punching down. I'm, I'm not punching no, no, down I know, at all. Yeah, I'm just I know saying. what you're saying. Like, well, what I'm saying is, like, I, I have friends like that, and I try, I try to talk to them about it, and like, try, you know what? Maybe we should get them on the show one time. D- didn't you have a guest star for us at one point? Uh, yeah, but that's at, that's at a later date. Darn it, man! Yeah, that, communication. That wasn't. Well, I told, I told you, I let you know <laughs> when they're gonna be on the show. And just like that, I have to be reminded that my memory is terrible. But <laughs> I'll be sure to message you every day. Hey, don't forget, we have a guest in the, unfore- in the foreseeable future. Oh, 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 you would totally be a jerk like that. But yeah, movies of 2016. I know a lot of good stuff came out, but uh, a lot of a good chunk of it came from Marvel and uh, Disney, obviously. Uh, Warner Brothers tried and failed horribly. <laughs> With some some of the, some of their endeavors, there were a couple of oddballs that kind of came out that I guess we could sort of mention. Someone passing, like uh, Duncan Jones's Warcraft came out, swing and a miss for video game adaptation movies, but they tried. There was another, I guess, Seth Graham Smith movie adaptation with Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. I, I think that technically came out this year, which is strange because I actually liked Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, but. I didn't bother to go Get see out. Brian Prejudice and Zombies. Now it's your turn. Get out. Just leave. Oh. Hey, trust me. I knew Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter was was wasn't good, oh, but I still but had I, fun I, I with knew it. It was gonna be garbage, but you know what? The point that you actually like that. Get out. No, no, no. Hear me out, man. I know it was a bad movie, but I still had fun with it. I mean, come on. It's Abraham Lincoln twirling an axe and killing vampires. And oh. <laughs> You should, it's you just should, so silly. You put that up on your guilty pleasures list when we were doing that episode. No, that's the joke, though. I actually forgot I saw it. You see, it's it's that it's, it's a, no, <laughs> no, no, no seriously, it's, it's, that's just forgetable. Are you? Are you, yeah, are you that's, are, that's what I mean, though, right? It's it, it's a, it's in the gray area. It's but are you like, sure you, you enjoyed this it? Movie? Are you sure you enjoyed it? Are you sure you liked it? <laughs> as as far as I can remember, all I remember really about remember about it was uh, the training sequence the, and the fight on the train and. That's about it. <laughs> like, I didn't even really care for that film, and I can still remember a few parts, like the training sequences, the whole gun and the axe thing, the whole. Oh, that was that was cheese. Yeah, that like, was cheese. Like, it was pretty stupid, and you don't want to tell me you liked it. I was okay with it. I was like, "Yep, yeah, I saw it. I'm not gonna remember it." And what did I do? I ended up remembering some of it, like not most of it though. <laughs> Yep, so I rest my case. There was also a surprisingly messed up movie that I do I do want to mention in passing. Like, like Kubo hit me in the feels, I guess is the way to say it, in all the right ways. Like, in terms of a really emotional movie that, I, that resonated, it's there. In terms of, I guess, intellectual stuff, I like what Civil War was doing in terms of a... In terms of a character arc story, I did like Benedict Cumberbatch and Doctor Strange... But in terms of uh, in terms of actors giving a performance you never would have expected, it was Ten Cloverfield Lane. I went out and saw that, and <laughs> it's it's a trip of a movie. It's basically it, it revolves around a woman played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, aka Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim. Ooh, guess what? Apparently, what? We hit our time limit. Oh, no. Yep. I'm, uh, dude, I'm, dude, I'm trying to wrap it up. This is supposed to be a truncated thing, man. Oh, oh, cliffhanger!